Let's walk through an example of how to maximize profit using the output rule. Now remember for the output rule we need to look for that quantity where marginal revenue and marginal cost are equal. So here we're going to have to calculate marginal revenue and marginal cost. Remember marginal revenue is the change in revenue divided by the change in quantity between any two lines. So here in the but from the first to the second line revenue changes by 500, quantity changes by 100, so the marginal revenue then would be 500 divided by 100 or 5. Meanwhile, marginal cost is the change in cost divided by the change in quantity. So in this case, cost goes from 100 up to 350. That's a change of $250, while quantity changes from 0 to 100, a change of 100. 250 divided by 100 is 2.5, or $2.50. Now if we continue on down, right, doing that same calculation for marginal revenue and marginal cost for each line, we end up with this result. Marginal revenue, it ends up as $5 every single time for the price taker. Meanwhile, marginal cost, it varies from 250 down to 2, but then it starts accelerating to 5, 7, and 750. And we're looking for the point where marginal revenue and marginal cost are equal. We see that they're both 5, somewhere between 200 and 300, um, being our quantity. And we can also see from our table that those also give us the highest profit, in this case $450, whether we produce either 200 or 300. So we end up with confirmation that this more finessey method of using the output rule does give us the same result as the brute force method of just calculating profit and finding where it's biggest. All right, so for price takers then, right, marginal revenue it ends up is equal to the price. Now we notice the marginal revenue is always five dollars. The same type, the price is always five dollars. Well, there's a reason for that, which we have the math laid out here, and that really marginal revenue is that change in revenue divided by the change in quantity. But for a price taker, the price is constant. So any changes revenue, change in revenue is really driven by the change in quantity. That being the case, the change in quantity can divide out, in effect, so marginal revenue and price are the same thing. Now this only works for price takers. For most firms, when you look at them, for them to sell more of their product, for their quantity to increase, they have to decrease their price to attract more customers. Here, for price takers, we assume that's not the case, that every price taker has basically as many customers as they would like to serve without having to cut their prices. Now, why would we go through all of this? Um, the reality is it provides a very nice shortcut in the real world, since we know in reality, the price of things will change over time. We know this happens all the time with things like gasoline, but also with things like milk, eggs, and the like. Prices do change. So what this allows us to do, because marginal revenue and price are the same thing, all we have to do is calculate marginal cost once, and then make marginal revenue whatever the price happens to be, and we're good to go regardless what the price does to us. Meanwhile, with brute force, we would have to recalculate all of the revenue, which means we have to recalculate all of the profit for every single possible point, and then find where it's largest again. We don't have to do that when we use the output rule and know that marginal revenue is just the same thing as the price for price takers. Right, so with the output rule, we don't have to do any new calculations anytime the price changes, so it provides a really nice shortcut if we're working in an environment where the price is changing. Right, so for example, here we could allow the price to rise to $7. If so, we just replace all the marginal revenues with $7. We find out we should produce somewhere between 300 and 400 units. That's where both marginal revenue and marginal cost are $700 or $7. Right. Meanwhile, with when the price falls, if it falls say to two dollars, now we should produce between 100 and 200 units because that's where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost if we set the marginal revenue to two dollars. So let's go ahead and check that. Let's make sure that this works for a price of two dollars. So here I've calculated through using both the brute force method and also we have the marginal revenue and marginal cost we already had. But we find an oddity. That is here, when we produce between 100 and 200 units, we're losing $150 or so. Meanwhile, if we'd produced nothing at all, we would have only lost $100. Hmm. This suggests that there might be something wrong here um, with using the output rule strictly. So let's check, figure out what's the problem. Why is it that that happened? The trick is that the revenue wasn't sufficient to cover our variable costs. So that means that we're better off producing nothing than producing anything. If our revenue coming in doesn't cover the variable cost, then producing, right, that is taking on those variable costs so we can produce, is actually going to lose us money compared to if we just did nothing at all and just ate the fixed cost. 
and sometimes, or in fact, better off just eating the fixed cost for now and looking for the exit or looking for things to possibly improve in the future. So how do we identify right, when this problem comes up? What we're really looking for right, is for profit at that quantity of zero. First, that we know is the same as just losing our fixed cost. Meanwhile, when we produce, we would have a profit of revenue minus our fixed cost, but also minus our variable cost. Subtract both of those costs. Right. So our profit when we produce nothing is going to be bigger than our profit when we produce if, right, then we can just plug things in right, using algebra. If losing the fixed cost is in fact greater than um, the revenue minus fixed cost minus variable cost. We have negative fixed cost on both sides, so we can drop that. Right? And then we can move variable cost to the other side. So we know that the profit will be bigger if we produce nothing, if producing results in variable costs that are bigger than our revenue. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a math trick here and divide both sides by quantity. And what that gives us is average variable cost, which, which, which we just define as being variable cost divided by quantity. If ver average variable cost is bigger than our price, then we're better off producing nothing at all. So if we end up with the market that we're in, if the price we can get away with charging is less than the, the minimum of our average variable cost, then we know we should just shut down. That is, we should just produce nothing and eat the fixed cost for now. Right. Um, for that reason, we would call the minimum average variable cost the shutdown point. Right? It is at that point that we decide that we should shut down. Right, so when we check for the shutdown point here, I've added a new column right, for average variable cost. Remember, average variable cost, just take the va variable cost divided by quantity. So in the first row, it would be 0 divided by 0, which is not defined, so we're going to ignore that one. Move on down to the second line. We have variable cost of 250, quantity of 100. 250 divided by 100 is 2.5, or $2.50. Go down to the third line. $450 is our variable cost, 200 is our quantity divide and we get 2.25 or $2.25. Continuing on down, right, we have at the fourth line, variable cost is $950. Divide that by the quantity of 300 and we end up with an average variable cost of $3.17. We can continue on down if we like. Um, the point being that here we can look for the shutdown point. We found that the lowest our average variable cost gets is $2.25. That suggests if the price falls below $2.25, we should produce nothing at all. So that explains why when we have a price of $2, we should not follow the output rule. Right? We should instead just shut down entirely.